Hello there, I'm Lauren, he's Josh, and this, this here is Brain Stuff. So, okay, Josh, have you ever been alone in the woods at night and, and you see a pair of glowing orbs? Mm -hmm. um, and you go, oh, that's something's eyes, that's, that's pretty creepy. And then you realize that there are actually many glowing orbs and you have no idea whether it's a group of harmless kittens or rabid bloodthirsty raccoons. Yes. So there's something really spooky about the way that animals' eyes shine in the dark. My grandmother, she called it the shining. Uh, but most people refer to it as the tapetum lucidum. Yeah, I don't think they really call it the shining. Just your, that's just your grandmother. That's just, oh, but she, she's everyone. <laughs> to you. <laughs> the tapetum lucidum, right? Tapetum lucidum. I, I think that bears repeating, and I think maybe it should even be spelled out somewhere. Because it's not exactly a word that flows off of the tongue. But the point of the whole thing is to uh, allow an animal to see better in the dark, right? Yeah, it's, it's a reflective surface behind the retina, and it's a pretty common feature in lots of vertebrates mm -hmm. that do stuff in low light environments. So normally, when uh, you are seeing things, like say you or I, right? Yeah. All of that information is coming to us through light, right? Right. And it goes through our eyes and into the retina, and the retina has photoreceptors. And here is where the light is absorbed and transmitted into information to the brain, right? Right. Well, not all of those photons, not all of that light makes it into the photoreceptors. So what a tapetum lucidum does is it gives that light a uh, second shot at being absorbed. That is entirely correct. <laughs> so the tapetum lucidum mm -hmm. is usually located behind the retina right. and it's uh, made up of mirrored crystals that reflect the light. Uh, lots of different animals have these so there's a broad diversity of how they're structured. Right. Depending on the type of animal there might be several layers of both high and low refractive index materials in the tapetum. These are compatible with different wavelengths of light, which just means that, uh, you know, depending on the, the structure of the layers and the particular colors of light that are coming into the eye, they'll either enhance or interfere with night vision. A tapetum with, say, like five layers might, in an optimal situation, reflect like 75% of which, the light. I mean, that's not bad, but we can do better. I feel like we can do better than 75%, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we're talking about the survival of the species here. We need to do better than 75%, so lay it on me. Uh, with like 10 to 20 layers, then then we get close up to 100%. There it is. Yeah. And then you said that there's a lot of different animals that have the tapetum lucidum. There are three basic tapetal morphotypes in vertebrates. Okay, I'll count them down. All right, so the first are animals without any tapetal lucida. This includes humans and other primates, uh, squirrels, pigs, and birds. In fact, birds are the only group of animals where the tapetum is consistently absent. Huh. Yeah. And number two? The second type are animals with the tapetal material located within the retina itself, uh, making it really close to the eye's photoreceptor cells, yeah? Yeah, that makes sense. Sure. Uh, the most common of this group is fish and reptiles. Right. It occurs really rarely in some mammals, like fruit bats and opossums. I think fruit bats are cute. I know that's weird. I'm not saying it just to be weird, but I just, they are cute in their own way. So the last type of animals uh, that have tapetal material, it's found inside the choroid vascular layer of the eye that's uh, kind of over or around or behind the retina or all three depending on the configuration of the animal's eyeball. It's just not like part of the retina. It's not part of the retina, yeah. yeah. It's a separate layer. So uh, what are some of the animals that have this? Uh, lemurs, uh -huh. cows, uh -huh. sheep, horses, and the aforementioned kittens. And yeah, kittens, right? And dogs? Dogs, uh-huh. Just not people? Not people. Okay. Yeah. Another difference is that not all tapetum lucidum shine with the same color, right? Oh yeah, so okay. Um, I know this part, if I may. Yeah. Uh, so depending on the um, some of the proteins and minerals in the eye, like riboflavin, mm -hmm. zinc, everything to make you like a strong, a strong kid, and then other things like imperfections in the eye, pigments, all of these things that kind of come together to form the tapetum lucidum, right? Right. And make its color. So you have things like green, yellow, blue, red. Uh, no, red is due to a different thing. Red eye in a photo mm -hmm. is from reflection off of the blood vessels at the back of your eye. So basically it's like uh, when you're looking at an animal and you see that uh, what's called eye shine from the tapetum lucidum. Right. You're actually looking clear through their eyeball to the back of their eye and it's being reflected by the tapetum lucidum, right? Right. But in a human, you're just seeing straight back and it's reflecting off of the blood. Right. And that's red eye. That is red eye. Well, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. 
So people out there, do you have pets? What color do their eyes shine? Uh, let us know on Facebook or Twitter. And if you want to learn more cool stuff about the world around us, visit our site at brainstuffshow.com.